Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Today's talk topic is waiting. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Mm. The waiting game is difficult. As I look back over my life and I think about the times I've been forced to wait, not just waiting in line, but waiting for something really big to come through. Like having a baby or interviewing for a job or that moment when you're going to propose to your lover. Waiting. Now, I suppose we could get into the energetics of anticipation and how a combination of stress, anxiousness, and excitement blend all together in that protein shake. But the truth is, we're going to focus on the weight. And is it worth it? Like, what is the point of this weight piece? The time it takes to get from here to there. You could say that someone that enters college just is waiting to graduate. But the truth is, is that the time between here and there is just a stretch of life, a span of time that is intended and meant to be lived. So during the time of the wait from the this place you are now to the goal that you have set for yourself or the place you are now to the intention you have or the place you are now, you are here on this map, to the vision that you are holding for yourself now, that whole time could be considered in part a time of wait. No, it's true. You're not doing, it's not that you're just stagnant and not moving. You can be waiting in a, in a state of waiting, but also be highly productive and moving through and handling lots of other aspects and components to your life. We are such multitasking as far as culture goes, we're expected to do a million different things at a million different ta- in a million different ways at one time. And then we wonder why there's so much ADD or ADHD for that matter. We split our focus, we split our priorities, and then we only are able to do things sort of kind of well, satisfactory enough to get us moving through what? Through to what? To what goal? To what intention, to what vision are we striving or moving toward in our momentum? It's hard to believe that that, all that busyness can be going on at the same time that we're also waiting. But what if waiting is a bubble of time? What if it's a gift? What if it's the cauldron of energy in the womb space that we drop into and are just held during that gestation period. What if the wait is a gestation period? It's a time to grow, a time to do, a time to have and receive experiences, to enrich our lives. What if the wait, the worthiness of the wait is about enriching our life experience so that when you get to the place of being able to receive and achieve the goal, the intent, the outcome, the vision, you will be so fully ready. What if the intention of the weight is life preparing you so that you can be all and fully show up and fully be present for that moment of receiving, for that next stage of your life to then be more fully lived and more fully enriched? What if this is about really deepening and savoring life? What if the point of waiting isn't to annoy you? What if the point of life and 
and the weight of things isn't to stop you or deter you or distract you from working on a goal or from achieving a dream or from holding that dream vision of life as you want it to be? What if it's not about the distraction or the deterrence or the redirection of that? What if that's not at all what that means? What if weight is natural? What if we're always constantly in a state of weight? Mm. This is an interesting topic. The energetics of this are very curious to me now. It seems as though we have become very instant gratification oriented. I've heard that before. We used to call that entitlement. Just so y'all know, back in the day, we used to say, oh, there's so, everybody so, feels so entitled. And now it's like, everybody just wants instant gratification. It's the same thing. It's just called something different, people. It's just called something different. <clears throat> so, <laughs> <sighs> what if the weight is a gift? What if it's a beautiful supportive way to give you exactly what you want? What if it's a way to give you the time to really sit with the dreams that you have in your heart? To really understand if the goals that you have set are truly worthy of your soul? Perhaps you have compromised. Perhaps you have thought, well, I can't. I can't imagine this person would ever want to be with me. So I'm going to lower my standards so that I can be with someone that's, you know, probably like more likely to want to be with me like that. Can you imagine? <clears throat> can you imagine walking through life like that? Like lowering your dreams, like cutting down your dreams. It'd be like cutting limbs off a tree. This tree is so beautiful, but I'm just going to cut some limbs off it because there's just, there's so many limbs and I'm just not sure if I really want to be able to, I just, I just don't know if I'm worthy of all that. And so I'm just going to cut some of her limbs off this beautiful tree so that, you know, she's more in alignment with me right now. But the truth is, is because when you have a dream like that, like, like such as love, this is the example I'm using, right? Then you need time to develop, to grow, to, to evolve to a place where then you truly are ready and prepared to receive that kind of love in your life. Because right now you might not see that. You might not be available for that. You might not, you might have very rough edges that have been so unhealed that if you were to meet that magical person now, you wouldn't even know them. Or you would feel so out of, like they would feel so out of your league that there's no possible way you could entertain a life with that person. And so the weight gives you the opportunity to love yourself so that when you show up in that right, beautiful timing to connect, you will be the most beautiful the most loved by self person that you will shine so brightly that your beloved will know you and be so, so, so over the moon overjoyed to accept you and receive you with open arms. We often set goals, intentions that come through our dreams and desires, the deep core desire that we have. But then when it gets up from the deepest part of ourselves, that lit up belly part of ourselves through our heart and into our mind, our mind distills it down. It attempts to rationalize and make something that is so dreamy and transcendent, realistic and more attainable from the lens of today, from the mind of today. When the truth is your mind will evolve and grow too, just as much as your spirit will help it heal. So the weight is imperative for your own happiness, for the best alignment. The weight is intended so the universe can help you co-create 
all of the pieces that you need to have in order to then receive and achieve that goal, that dream, that desire. But recognize this, that the mind will talk you out of it or talk you down. It will dumb you down. And it's doing so to help prevent you from being disappointed, which is a huge human thing. It's just natural for us to not want to be disappointed, not want to be hurt, not want to be um, focusing on the wrong things and then miss out on other things and all of that, right? It's normal for the mind to want to really take care of you. So it's not going to encourage risk. It's not going to encourage long range goals because it cannot possibly understand how you here today could achieve that goal. It cannot see that far ahead. Its job is to keep you alive today in the now moment. And in the mind, every moment is an appending crisis ready to happen. If there is this perception of too much distance between where you are now and where you want to be or where you are now and what your deepest desire is, the mind will convince you that that is a fantasy and it can't be real it can't possibly real be real for you and it will give you a history bullet pointed out as to why your current and past life experiences do not qualify you for that future desire and dream to manifest but the universe has this thing called the wait the waiting the physical human time between now the moment that you realize you have that dream and desire and you're willing to acknowledge it and let it come forward and allow it to become a vision and intention for your life, which you at the bare minimum should allow yourself that. At least give yourself the possibility to dream without the fear of the mind stepping in and trying to convince you that you're not that. Well, of course you're not that. That's why it's called a dream. That's why it's called a vision. That's why it is for the future. But the future self of you is different than the today self of you. So focus on the today self of you and tell the mind to shut up because you are doing the work needed today. You are laying the footings, the groundwork, the foundation that will give you all that you need to have in any today now moment that will eventually lead you to the outcome that you desire, the moment that you meet your beloved. And you will be ready because you will have had multiple days, if not years, to prepare for that encounter. Now, you're not going to be thinking about this every day of your life in this way of, how am I preparing for my love today? How am I preparing for this today? How am I preparing? No. But you will hold the vision, hold the beautiful energetic of that dream. And you can feel that through meditation. You can see that in your mind's eye. You can you do visualizations for that. You can do vision boards, dream boards. You can do, you can create. There's so many ways you can help to manifest that. You could do a grid about love and enhancing love in your life so that now and the now moments and the experiences you have now will prepare you for that ultimate, beautiful, divine intersection point where the wait will be over because you will be there. You'll be right there in that moment of beauty and connection. So you could do a grid, use a sacred geometry. You could print one out. You don't have to have a grid cloth. You could print one out, a piece of paper, and set some crystals or rocks on it or just set it down on a little end table that you have in your living room and put some special things on it that represent or amplify the energy of love of a dream. It might be a quote you have. It could be a fortune you have that you got about love. It could be some hearts. It could be something you make, like a wreath. It could be a candle that smells like roses. It could be actual roses. It could be dried roses. It could be beautiful things from nature. It could be pictures of people you love, your family, your friends. It could be literally anything. But this is just an energetic reminder of what is inside. So you bring it out in your human physical environment while you are then waiting. While you are in the time between now and then. 
you still hold that energetic feeling of hope, that sweetness that the universe then can cultivate and amplify and magnetize for you. That's what energy is. That is what energy is. And it is a thing, people. It is a thing. It's the creepy feeling you get from some people and the warm and fuzzy feeling you get from some other people that you meet, right? It's so easy to use this in the context of relationships because it's so obvious. You can tell. You get vibes, right? That's energy. That's energy, okay? It's a real thing. So waiting has a purpose. It's hard. It's not always easy. Especially once you, it's like you're afraid to be aware of it. Because if you're aware of it, then you can't not know it. I always say that to people, actually. I've said that for years. It's hard. Because once you are in awareness, you can't unknow something. You can't not know it. You just know it. It's too late now. You know it. Ha ha. So everything you do now after... You have to do experience, go on with your life, knowing all of this other stuff that you now know because you're aware of it. I know that works for bad things or things that we consider bad or difficult, tragic, even trauma experiences, right? It comes back up, right? We can't unknow that, but we can heal from it, okay? And same too with the good things that you become to your awareness, it's not in, in desire. It's not the desire is not to cause you pain, to know, to understand the distance or the separation. The desire is to give you the momentum and the encouragement of your day to day life as a process to cultivate the experiences and the time and space to heal and work on yourself to the point that so that you will be incredibly qualified and potently, potently able to receive exactly what you wanted. And in fact, probably a better, more upgraded, magnetized version. It's not about being patient in the way where you would ignore that, you know, ignore your desire. I'm just going to be patient. I'm just going to be patient. Just magically it's going to happen. No, you must be aware of that's why there's a wait. There's a difference between patient, being patient, and waiting. Waiting is the intention. And you can do things while you wait. You're supposed to do things while you wait. You're supposed to live life now while you wait. You're supposed to work on yourself while you wait. You're supposed to also hold a higher vision while you wait for exactly what you're dreaming of wanting every single day. It's not for the pain of the lack of the separation between where you are now and what you want. It's for the motivation and the inspiration, the encouragement that what you are doing now is going to bring you to the exact right moment and place and time where that will intersect and it will meet and you will receive through your wholeness and amplify. Not in your broken pieces and particles, Not how you feel right now. Not the inadequacy or the less than. There is so much value in the weight. Use it. Leverage it. You will be better for it. Don't accept less than for your desires. Don't talk yourself into dumbing down the life that you want because you don't feel qualified today. Remember, kids that are entering college now, people that are entering college or re-entering college and getting trained for something new, they're not qualified to be a doctor or a nurse today. Oh, please. The people that are going to be delivering your kids' babies, right, you know, in the future here, they're just in school now, okay? They're just starting college They are not qualified to do surgery. They're not qualified to be in the delivery room at the hospital. They are not qualified. But in time, during the wait, they will be. The wait is intentional. It's intentional. Of course, you're not qualified today. Life will qualify you.
Ain't that the truth? Woo. Wow. I haven't even had my coffee. I'm still sitting in bed. It's like 5.30 a.m. I haven't been sleeping great lately, so I've been getting up and periodically at times of the night. Uh, uh, super aware of the weight piece, I guess, right now. And I can barely see the moon. It's like a full moon. Almost a full moon. I can barely kind of see the kind of pretty colors of the sky kind of swapping out with that moonlight energy. And I kind of love it. I can barely see it through the window here, kind of over a ways away from my bed here now. But, hmm. I'm not waiting for the morning. I'm just really appreciating connecting with you in this cozy space early, early in the morning. Now, let's go have some coffee. Sound good? I'll make it. I'll make you some. I'll make you some. So this is Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope today and encouraged you to live your life. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for listening.